Okay, so now we're going on to the 1800s. This is one of the shorter paragraphs. Only three main events of importance happen in this decade. First, we have the Despard Plot of 1802, the Food Riot of 1800 to 1801, although one must remember technically they spanned 1799 to 1801, but I'll elaborate on that later on. We then have the Napoleonic Wars of 1803 to 1815, and these essentially stop the majority of popular protest throughout the period. That's why we don't really see it bubbling to the surface again until the 1816. So that was Sparfield's the mid 1810s. So let's get into it. The Despard plot. The, on the left we have a picture of Colonel Despard uh, in his prime when he was alive. And to the right, we have him on the gallows where he is to be executed. So, let's see how he got there. The Despard plot of November 1802 was extremely radical. Colonel Despard was a former member of both the United Englishmen and the London Corresponding Society. Now remember, these were the main vents of radicalism through the late 1790s so although they were not inherently radical you can write about in your essay how when they were forced underground through Pitt's reign of terror if you think it deserves that name uh, nonetheless when they were put underground they inherently became more radical and removing them from the mainstream and suppressing their freedom of speech essentially can be considered uh, responsible for this plot so if you're going to be thinking about did the government deal with it well well no because kind of what they've done has messed up in the future like it came back to haunt them because obviously they almost lost an insurrection if you believe they did I personally believe that they did not the Despard conspirators didn't really have much of a chance, and I'll explain why now. So, Despard planned a coup d'etat in the capital city of England, obviously London. The specifics of the plot are unclear, but it seems as though Despard sought to subvert the military in London before seizing several key buildings. The government's use of spies meant they were well informed of the plot in its early stages. As a result, Despard and 35 co-conspirators were arrested in November of 1802 on charges of treason. Despard and five others, it should say there, were subsequently executed in February of 1803. So... Thinking about did the government deal with the Despard plot well and was the Despard plot caused by political ideology or poverty? Well, considering Despard was rather radical, it would seem as though it was primarily driven by political ideology and considering did the government deal with it well? Well, I would probably say yes, they dealt with it phenomenally well, although it is partially their fault for it happening in the first place. But obviously their use of spies was able to crush it in its early stages and prevent Despard and his conspirators from effectively overthrowing the government of the United Kingdom. So now we're going on to the food riots. The food riots are comparable to the naval mutinies of 1797 in the sense that both show how some militant radicals can use economic turmoil to force the populace into action. And I put there, violence born of despair. 
Now, it's not necessary for your essays, but if you really want to impress the examiners, try throwing in some quotes now and then from the key radicals at the time. So, thinking about William Cobbett, that violence born of despair quote came from Henry Hunt, the famous orator. Uh, we'll go more into him when he comes up in the late 1810s. Uh, so these riots had the same features of a traditional English food riot, but the fact that they were concentrated in urban areas was unusual, and some subversive literature was distributed at these riots, which could indicate that it was partially driven by political ideology and radicalism, as opposed to being purely a result of... Uh, instead of purely being a result. So you have to think, if they were distributing subversive literature, were the food riots driven by political ideology, or were they purely driven out of uh, a populace submerged in poverty? So I would say it's a mixture between the two. So, they were a result of wartime inflation, falling wages and rising food prices. Textile workers espoused slogans such as No War and Damn Pit. Now, obviously, as you can tell, the government would not be too thrilled about this anti-government radical agenda. The riots were organised by underground radical and trade union groups between 1799 and 1801, and they generated antagonism between the lower and upper classes. They swiftly ended when the Napoleonic Wars began, and the economy began to temporarily recover. So, the Napoleonic Wars... The Napoleonic Wars would mark the end of popular protest until, sorry, they would mark the end of popular protest between 1803 and 1815, as the British public have a propensity to come together when posed with an existential threat, namely Napoleon. National heroes such as the Duke of Wellington and Admiral Nelson would heighten the public sense of patriotism at the time. The demand for soldiers provided the able-bodied working class with work, and Napoleon's, Napoleon's implementation of the continental system gave the people an external foe to blame for their strife. So protest against their own government was pointless. Obviously propaganda would play a role in that as well, but you'd have to think, essentially in your essay just, the Napoleonic Wars resulted in an end protest due to increased patriotism and economic recovery. Some of the deeply religious in society also deemed Napoleon to be the Antichrist. Obviously if you're not religious, you don't have to agree, it's just a thing you can include in your essay. So they perceived the need to eliminate him as a threat, as far more paramount to the national interest than parliamentary reform. So obviously if you're religious, you think Napoleon is the Antichrist, you're not going to be too uh, focused on parliamentary reform. You're probably going to be focusing on the person you deem to be a massive threat to society. Now, obviously, uh, most people won't believe that, and I don't, but it's just something to include in your essay to show you've done uh, supercurriculars and extra reading in your own time, and to make sure you can get those higher grades. So, next time, we're going to be looking at the 1810s, uh, probably the most... the probably the most exciting time in the period got Pentrick uprising the Sparfield meetings Peterloo the March of the Blanketeers and Luddism and I've included a picture there to show 1812 Napoleon's retreat from Russia following his 
horrendous defeat. It was essentially the beginning of the end for Napoleon. Uh, obviously, you're studying history, so the main lesson to take from that is don't invade Russia. Unless it invades Ukraine, obviously. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we'll go, we'll go on to that next lesson. So I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.